All right, so if you want to go ahead and start with an introduction. Very good. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Jonathan Gould. I am a full professor at Saginaw Valley. I'm talking to today about the SVSU Principalships uh, MED Master's and Principalship Degree Program, of which I am an alumni as well. So I went through the program myself about 20 years ago, um, been administrator in various schools in the area while teaching full time at Saginaw Valley. Um, my history with Saginaw Valley actually goes back to my teaching credentials, uh, my master's and my ed specialist. So I've been at Saginaw Valley for a long time on different sides of the desk, if you will. So now I teach in two programs, secondary education and ed leadership, specifically with the principalship program that we're talking about today. Awesome, thank you. So the first question that came up is, how will classes be taught? Classes are taught in a hybrid format and online as well. And what hybrid means is that, uh, for example, we take two classes per semester. Our classes are offered one time per year. And so to, most students are working teachers and or brand new administrators that have just started taking the role. If you're a brand new principal, you literally have six months to be enrolled in a principalship program and three years to be completed, which our program complements nicely. So our program is indeed designed around the working adult, whether it's a teacher or a brand new principal or someone else in education. Our classes are normally scheduled two times, I'm sorry, two classes per semester. They're offered one time per year once again. And traditionally one class is offered completely online this semester and the other class is offered in somewhat of an online format. Um, I'm sorry, in a face-to-face -face format. Our face-to-face -face format is um, we meet one time per month, um, generally like on a Saturday from nine to nine in the morning to noon. So one class, uh, one time per month, one class uh, online. And in the fall, that's the format. In the spring, the, I'm sorry, in the winter, that's the format. In the spring between years one and two, there's no coursework. In the summer between years one and two, we do offer two courses that are offered the four Tuesdays in July. We avoid the 4th of July holiday break, um, but realistically it would be nine to noon for one class and then noon to three for the other class. Fall of year two is the same format as fall of year one, same with winter. And then spring of year two, it's a single class on a Saturday, just three times, a little bit longer because it's only three times and you're done. So you can complete the program in uh, two years you can take up to seven years as well. So the complete list of courses, um, which uh, courses offered and when are available in the Saginaw Valley uh, brochure for the principalship program. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and students are interested about where their assignments will be posted. So is it mainly Canvas or? Sure, you know? well, we use the Canvas uh, site exclusively for everything that we do. So for example, the files folder is where we would store the syllabus and all of the other resources. Um, the information in the syllabus in my course is literally cut and pasted into the discussions folder, into the assignments folder. Um, and so everything's very consistent. And so you would use Canvas for all of your um, asynchronous, non-face-to-face -face discussions, as well as where you would post your discussions, your, your responses, I call them blogs, and then we keep track of your, your, your responses in your initial blogs via a blog log, if you will. What's nice about that, it's very easy for the MDE to archive um, that you actually have been involved with class. Uh, it's, when I went through the program, it was a 45 hour contact uh, for each class. That means 15 weeks, three hours per week. So we still do that, but it's a similar, uh, it's a format where we have our face-to-face -face meetings uh, combined with these asynchronous discussions using the Canvas discussions folders so that uh, students, in my opinion, students are even more engaged than they were in a class. And this is evidenced in the student evaluations. Because you think, you know how it is in a class. Uh, you raise your hand once or twice, you've got to share the air with other classmates, where in an online discussion, there's an expectation that you do respond to many and respond often. And so there's, there's none of that concern. I've had students have said they've actually been more engaged in our hybrid or online classes because of this feature. That's great. That's good to hear. Um, and then another question that popped up is how many credits, I know you started to kind of say, you know, has kind of the, the amount of classes they should take in a semester, but how many would you recommend a student take each semester? I actually recommend that students take the two classes per semester. A couple of reasons. One, the two classes are designed to complement one another. So if you're taking the two classes in the fall, they're aware of it literally is the right hand and the left hand knowing what each is doing. And so they complement each other. 
Um, also financial aid, if you just take a single graduate level class, I'm not sure that Saginaw Valley has a financial aid product for you other than going privately to your own bank. So, but if you have two classes at six credit hours at the graduate level, that is considered full-time. So you're eligible for all the financial aid benefits of being a full-time student. Plus then you complete the program in two years. Great. Um, in your opinion, what do you think is the most difficult aspect for this, or for a student in this program? Oh, I think that, the, and this is true whether you're in this program or any program, just the balance between a professional life, um, uh, academic life, taking classes, and a personal life. And so I always encourage folks to get a calendar or whatever it may be in the schedule time, not only for, for classes and professional commitments and, and, and family time, but also personal time. I think the administrators and teachers that last the 30 plus years are the ones that have found that balance to make sure that they schedule time for self, family, uh, professional, as well as academic endeavors. Great, thank you. Um, so within the program, who would you identify for students to go to as a resource, ask questions of, to, anything like that? Well, we've got three people, I think, that would be like the super glue that hold the program together. Uh, Kathy Lopez is our certification officer located in the College of Education, and she's the one that literally in, keeps her finger on the pulse of what's happening at the MDE and certification. She does an excellent job, not only for our future principals, but also our future teachers as well. Dr. Lacrita Clark and myself are the two primary faculty involved in the principalship program, and we both teach about the same number of courses within. So I think between the three of us, we'll do our best for you. Great. Uh, what strengths do you and any other faculty members in the program possess to help students reach their full potential? I think the strengths of, of our program is that we're uh, having been there and done that type faculty. I'm still quite involved with K-12 schools. I do a fair amount of consulting and I do that on purpose to keep myself current and literally out there in the trenches. For example, right now with everything that's going down with COVID, I'm right on the front lines with a district not too far from here helping to problem solve and do what's best for teachers and kids and the community. Um, so the fact that not only have we walked the walk and talked the talk, but still do so, I think is a pretty good strength. So both Dr. Clark and myself and any adjuncts that we use are current frontline people. It's not like we've been in the classroom 25 years ago and now we're reminiscing. No, when people say, well, how long ago did you do this? I can say yesterday. That's great. I'm glad that you're still involved and can be a good resource for students. Um, if a student is successful in your program, do you recommend continuing on or any continued education? Well, I'm a fan of the old Saturday morning, the more you know, the farther you go, with low star cartoon kind of flying across the screen. Um, and I guess that resonated with me even as a young person. I guess the question isn't, um, should you go on for an education, but why wouldn't you? I mean, education doesn't guarantee anything, but it does increase the odds of continued future financial uh, and professional security, but it also reinforces that you're a lifelong learner. I mean, we want our students to continue learning. Uh, why wouldn't we model that behavior? Plus, I can once again say with empathy, I know what it's like to have to juggle personal, professional uh, lives as well as homework. I still could take continuing education for all of my degrees by college classes. I could do professional development in a log, et cetera, but I think there's value in literally taking a college class, two of them, every five years, just so that I can stay in the empathetic mode of this is what homework feels like and carving out time to get it done and as well as to, to take care of personal and self and uh, professional responsibilities, so. That's great. Um, one of the final questions that came up is, what employment opportunity do you see most students obtaining either following graduation or even while they're still studying? The program, you actually, each of our courses have field work responsibilities. It, to me, it doesn't make sense to do all the field work at the end you should be practicing some of the new arrows in your quiver, if you will, while you're actually in the course. And so because you are actually doing field work activities, assisting principals and assistant principals and other district administrators um, in the field with some shadowing and interviewing, the word is out that you're aspiring to possibly become a future principal. 
And so not only are you getting practice, but people are already starting to find homes and jobs and positions for you because they can know within two years, you're going to be at the other end of this program and looking for a position. And sometimes they're kind of fighting or trying to steal you. Uh, a lot of students will do all of their field work within their building, within their district. But I encourage them to kind of spread out and try to do some field work activities outside. Again, with that networking, getting your name and experience levels out there as you get near the end towards graduation and completion of the program. Awesome, so that's great. It's competitive. The students are definitely finding employment after graduation. Yes. Awesome. Um, and the final question is just, what is the best way to contact you? Oh, I think I'm a huge fan of email. I don't have Facebook or Twitter. I have Saginaw Valley email, so that is my social network. So I check email probably way too often, but I think why not? So, but my email address, jagould at svsu.edu. Perfect. 